Hello, everyone. So welcome to virtual open day of Aalto University. Um, today, uh, we're going to discuss the studies in School of Arts, Design and Architecture. Um, before that, um, I, I would like to say that if you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the chat and then they're going to be answered uh, later on in the question and answers uh, discussion. Uh, and if you still um, going to have some questions left, uh, feel free to write to admissions.alta.fi. Okay, let's go. So who are we? Uh, I'll start from myself. Mm, today I'm, I'm an interviewer here and my name is Demira. I'm from Kazakhstan and I study bachelor's degree here in Alta University. Uh, second year and my major is called digital systems and design. So um, I'd like my fellow students to answer to the same question. <laughs> okay, hello everyone. I'm Milica, I'm coming from Serbia, and this is my first year here in Masters in Architecture on Alto University. Also, this is my first year with the Alto squad. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Imran. I'm from Malaysia and Australia, and I'm studying collaborative and industrial design. Uh, this is the beginning of my fourth year here and my final year at Alto University. Okay. Hey, I'm Michael. I'm a second year master's student in creative sustainability. I'm from Germany. And same as Melissa, I'm also just, I just started as an Alto squad member. Nice to meet you. Hey. Okay, um, let's move on to the discussion about the studies in Alto University. Overall, Alto University is a home to unique study paths, and one of them is the uh, architecture and design. Um, and now I'd like to ask my uh, fellow panelists to answer some questions about why did they choose Alta University? So Melissa can start. Yes, well, while I was searching for the university I would like to attend for my master's studies, I actually discovered Alta University. And I also have some friends here, and it was such an honor to me to even try to apply to the new university made after, um, named after one of the greatest architects ever lived, which is who is uh, which is Alvaro Aalto. So that was one of my reasons. Apart from that, I also heard some experiences from my friends who came here earlier that uh, this university is really open to everyone and. There is a lot of international students, so it's really easy to blend in. Everyone knows English, and the old programs are in English. So this is my like first motivation. And, af and after I discovered like the work of the Alta Squad Instagram page and all the activities that are happening here. So these are my reasons. Mm -hmm. OK, what about you, Imran? Uh, it's a bit of a roundabout way. I actually didn't realize Alta University existed and I actually uh, found the program, but I found it because of Alva Alta himself. Uh, one of his projects inspired me to do a human centered design master's program. And, and that's what I found uh, in collaborative and industrial design. And only through the application process, I realized I was joining Alta University. So. Uh, it was quite good. I was also surprised when I started my studies that there were five other master's tracks, uh, creative sustainability being a very good one as well. So that was that was a nice surprise that there's um, a lot of good programs available. Mm, okay. And what about you, Michael? Yeah, for me, I also have to say that I didn't know about Alto before. Um, I was searching for... Uh, um, well, like, let, let's say like that I was like studying communication design in Germany and uh, I was kind of stuck on where I can, like what design can be or what I can do as a designer to make the world a bit better. 
So trying to find a study that is connected to sustainability and where I can kind of reach out to other disciplines and also just had the best study Europe wide that I could find. And um, so I got hooked. And now that I'm here, I find it more and more fascinating, the whole university. Yeah. Okay. So, and what is the best part about studying at Alto, especially on your program? Uh, Melissa? <laughs> well, for me so far, the best part was that everyone are really relaxed especially professor and my schedule is really, really relaxed, which differs mm -hmm. a lot from my bachelor studies. So that was a big change for me. And I like that a lot because now I have free time to attend to all these different uh, events and activities that are available here. You will probably hear about that more later. Mm -hmm. But these are like the best. The best thing is that balance that now I can have while studying on Alto here. Okay, wow. Um, and what about you, Imran? Uh, I, I would actually say the best part about studying at Alto is the student culture. Uh, this photo here is actually of the this thing called the Vaputaki, which is a, sort of a uniform for the study association for the Department of Design. Uh, and uh, other schools have overalls, for example. Um, but the student culture here is really embedded in a foundation of advocacy, which is mm -hmm. upheld by Finnish law. So it's really good that the university and uh, the programs, they listen to the feedback of the students. So that's actually made studying here very enjoyable because if there's something that's not right, you can speak up and they'll actually make changes. And that's helped to enrich um, the program that I'm in. Uh, for the new students that come that I'm actually tutoring this year. So it's really nice to see that they're benefiting from all the advocacy work we do. So that's, I, I would say like Alta University does listen to its students and that's really wonderful to study here. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I also do tutoring <laughs> this year. Um, okay, uh, what about you, Michael? It's already so well summarized, actually. But yeah, I also like the fact that it's like, like that there's so many things going on off curriculum. Um, and you can just, it's so easy to find your niche here. Um, there's so many associations going on, so many activities, events. So um, you, you're not feeling lost here at all. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what made you want to study your field? Like, okay, maybe Imran will start this, this yeah, time. Yeah, uh, well, for, for me, I, I did my undergraduate in design. I actually had a, a big dream of being an engineer for a Formula One team. And uh, mm -hmm. it kind of fell apart when, when I wasn't passing chemistry and physics, and maths. But there were some other reasons. But uh, I found myself in design because it's, I think I'm very driven or uh, attracted to solving problems and Industrial design is a space where you're actually now dealing with a lot of contemporary and societal issues and mm -hmm. and uh, and definitely human centered design is is something I was always attracted to, uh, even in the early days in the form of interaction design and human centered design means you're actually solving problems for people and mm -hmm. not just to make money and just to produce nice, beautiful objects. So. That was really, that was the main motivator for me. Oh, okay. And Michael? Yeah, personally, uh, creative sustainability goes maybe even a bit faster in, in terms of, uh, like, not faster, but further in terms of what design w wants to reach. It doesn't just want to um, have human-centered design, but maybe also, like, earth-centered design or ecosystem-centered design. and. Um, it's very hard to reach those, like to, 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 like when you're in your discipline, like for example, in engineering or in design or somewhere else, it's very hard to tackle those kind of big problems with just your own discipline. And um, creative sustainability is built up in a way that all the different schools of Alto are um, in seminars, are in courses together, and are building things together with all the different expertises. And I like that me as a designer can, I can, I'm kind of like the person who holds all the hands of the disciplines. It was like the, the catalyst on trying to 
bring them all together and like that's a role that I really like to explore for myself. So yeah, that's why I study that. <laughs> Okay. Actually, for me, it's much simpler because I already did my bachelor's in architecture, so this was kind of natural path for me. But now uh, I got interested in like user-oriented space while I was at my bachelor's studies at the University of Technical Sciences in Novi Sad. So I, I decided to choose the courses related to that topics more because there are many available courses in, in this topic so I'm trying to like mm -hmm. yeah okay. define my studies in in that way yeah and like what kind of courses are there and like in your studies are they mm, differ for example mm, from the thing that you are um, got used to it in, in your home country like how are they conducted, for example? Well, in architecture, for example, three different topics and then we pick studios and uh, in urban design, building design and uh, history of architecture. So there are various studios we, should, we have to take like each semester and there are different like lecture types of, uh, of courses we can all also take and they differ from like this these three topics so we are able to combine them as as we like and okay. basically yeah made our own program completely on our diploma good uh yeah and that was the question from this part <laughs> sorry um yeah um so maybe Michael well, maybe, tells, yeah, maybe you can like uh, tell a bit more about it. Yeah, I mean, I've got these studies, they're at the moment completely remote for me. Mm -hmm. And the attendance actually is 80, 80 to 100% mandatory, which was kind of surprising for master studies. But I think that is great because professors are really reasonable and really flexible, and they will try to make compromise to prevent. To you from if, if, if something prevents you from attending the lecture mm -hmm. and um, it's also really good to know that they are actually listen to students and make changes in uh, the way courses conducted in accordance to the students needs so mm -hmm. one 80 or 100 percent mandatory attendance mm -hmm. is not actually that it's it's doable <laughs> but mm -hmm. yeah i was scared of that a bit uh, at the beginning. Okay, okay. What about others? Yeah. Yeah, so personally, um, at least, yes, like you start by kind of building a building a common foundation. So the, the first uh, semester is a lot of uh, normal seminars and, uh, and some group work courses that are trying to bring out everyone on the same level and understanding. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's also a lot of like studio courses and I li really like those actually. Like, they're longer usually than, than um, other courses, more ECTS as well. And there you can really get your hands dirty and um, try out all your knowledge. So. Um, Yes, those play like a big part in my studies as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to add to that, uh, there's some there's some fun little quirks here. So there's this thing called the academic quarter, where, which is uh, you start 15 minutes after the hour. So the class says nine, but really it starts at 9:15, and that was a fun. That meant I was never late to class. So that was a fun little uh, thing I learned when I got here. Mm -hmm. But uh, practically speaking, yeah, my studies were uh, quite quite group oriented, and uh, I dedicated a lot of my week to working in a group alongside attending classes for the subjects I was doing. It I tried to keep it to one one course per um, period, and that way I was able to manage my time a bit better. But um, mm -hmm. With the ECTS structure, I think it's 27 hours per ECTS, so it can work out to be a, a nine, nine and a half hour day over a five day week. So, and that includes everything from thinking time. 
so that was that was a readjustment for me because I was freelancing before I studied so I went from quite a flexible to a more regimented time but mm -hmm. uh, it, it's manageable and doable and you get your weekends so you have a chance to recover I think that's that's really important and they really emphasize not working on the weekends especially my program mm -hmm. okay thank you um Okay, and are there multidisciplinary opportunities in your studies? Like, for example, can you take uh, courses from other schools of our university? Yeah. Yes, architecture is kind of really multidisciplinary here. And there are opportunities to include like many classes from the civil engineering or even take minor in creative sustainability, which is really interesting for me so also you can take many courses from arts and expand like your field of interest and learn many new skills and somehow incorporate them with the architecture and your design mm -hmm. okay, um... yeah like my, as i already said my course is kind of like building on that so many many courses are um, actually from other schools and they actually require you um, to take a certain part of ECTS from other schools. So they really, really encourage you to check out all the opportunities in other fields and learn from them. Um, yeah, and they give you a lot of freedom in your minors as well. Like as, as long as you can somehow explain what you're doing, they're usually up to it as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And now? Yeah, um, there are many opportunities you can, I mean, I think I'm, as Alta students, we can apply to any, take a course in any university in Finland, for example. Yeah, so if you want to go and study in Lapland for a period or a semester, you can. You just have to do the right paperwork and connect there and you can jump into another field as well. But definitely within the program, there's things like uh, PDP, which is project, product development project. And uh, mm -hmm. that is a, a multidisciplinary cohort of students. It's based in the School of Engineering, but you have designers, architects, engineers, scientists, business students, uh, everyone is there. And then also I would say that intradisciplinary, so within the School of Arts is really good. There's the UAS courses, university-wide art studies. Uh, and I could take classes from architecture, interior architecture, creative sustainability. So. You can move around within your area as well as a broader to the whole university. So those mm -hmm. opportunities are there. Okay. Um, so what is your course load like? And for example, um, what does a study year at Alto look like? Uh, how many uh, credits do you take your semester and etc. So, yeah. I can start. Mm -hmm. Well, the academic year has two semesters. First semester has two periods and second semester has three periods. And some of the courses last for one, some of the courses last for two periods or even more. At the moment, I'm taking the one studio in architectural design, which lasts for two periods, basically the whole uh, semester. And other, another lectures I'm taking are one or two periods long and they are mostly for me because they were my choices um, discussion reading essay writing orient oriented which is unlike my previous exp experience in bachelors when my courses were like more design orient oriented and I can notice that architecture here is um, a one man's job, you are not designing in a teams, maybe in some studios, but most likely that you will work completely on your own. Unlike in my previous experience, I'm not sure how it's for like people from different universities, but it was kind of new that you have this really large building to figure out on your own. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what about others? I think I mentioned earlier about the hour requirement of um, of the ECTSs and uh, to go into that a bit deeper, it's kind of like I would spend uh, quite a lot of time reading and also thinking and processing my reading. 
and that time is really taken care of. And I think I mentioned at the beginning, a lot of group work. So um, my course structure was, I think it's changing from next year, but it was about 10 ECTSs per period. period. So that it basically meant a 45 hour week of work. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that was actually maybe a really nice balance, especially if you spent two or three hours of each day reflecting on your classes. So you can mm -hmm. do that when you're making dinner and having lunch. So it's sort of like, it's, it's all accounted for. And uh, working in a team can be sometimes uh, quite time consuming because you have to make time to solve problems together. And that style of working is really encouraged. I think maybe it's in relation to how we will work in industry as well. So uh, that, that, that's a good, it's a really good place to get to know yourself and how you work with others. Mm -hmm. um, sorry to interrupt. Uh, is the ACTS or are the credits, right? The course credits. Uh, so, uh, okay. Yeah, ACTS, yes. I, I don't know what they stand for. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's like a, a it's EU, no, it's a um, EU agreed uh, oh, okay, study okay. load. Okay. Uh, def yeah, definition. So they can standardize education across Europe and and mm -hmm. also you can do things like exchanges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, Michael, do you want to add something? Yeah, here? for sure. Like personally, right now, um, it depends really on the on the period on and semester how my study load is right now. Um, I decided this year to minor in IDBM, which is uh, International Design Business Management, mm -hmm. and they require, they have the one course called um, IDBM Challenge, which is like a, a course that spans like for, I think it's just like four weeks and they, it's some kind of, maybe you can call it hackathon or something, where you work in small teams and try to solve complex societal challenges, and then at the end there's this big show. So that's a lot of stuff going on at once, a lot of ETCS crammed into four weeks. Um, then what I have parallel to that is like um, a course from CS, which is Sustainable Transitions and Futures. Um, this is a very interesting course where we try to reimagine the Alto Campus um, in 2050 and try to make it better for multiple speeches to live there it's very interesting it's but it's just for the school of design in this case so it's just us designers working there and small teams and then i'm also attending a finnish course so right now it's actually pretty packed and um mm -hmm. yeah like i can just recommend when you when, when you're for example from the eu and you have a study ride that's like more than two years um i mean i, I think alto university doesn't really want you to do that but um like Two years is pretty tight, also when you want to take a lot of courses and you're interested in a lot of things. So it might make sense to maybe make a, like a, a semester more or something to kind of stretch out. And yeah, it, it, else it can be pretty tough with like 12 ECTS per, per uh, period. Yeah, OK, um, let's move on. No. I might add quickly to Michael's okay. comment yeah. that uh, when you do student volunteering work, that can add a bit to your study load in the sense that you are now taking away a bit of time from your studies to spend on devoting to the community. So it's really rewarding and, and really good for networking, which is important for finding a job here in Finland. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. Okay, um, so now I'd like you to tell more about a typical day that you have usually. Well, okay, I'm um, first. Yeah, you're the I person. try to wake up as early as I can in the morning. Usually it's not always like 8 a.m., but I'm trying to reach that goal. And usually I have some of these remote lectures because all my lectures are completely remote this semester. Mm -hmm. There is no need for us to attend actually in person, but I think that some of the lectures will actually be organized by our professors in person for the people who want to attend. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, um, I have this quick break for lunch, well, only one hour, and then I attend my design studio, which is four hours long. We are sharing our presentation and our pro progress with our project. After that, it's all already like really late in the day, so I use that free time to walk around campus or hang out with friends. 
And also it's good to have some kind of physical activity, especially as an architecture student, because we are sitting a lot. So this semester I took the pole dance classes and there are really various things you can do. You can go to the gym or horse riding or pole dance, like really, really many, there are many, many, many associations and other like opportunities to do sports. Then I try to like prepare myself for the next day in the evening. And my favorite time of the day is actually night coffee and tea with my neighbors. I have really, really great neighbors. So every day we sit down and sum up, wrap up our day and discuss about things. So mm -hmm. yeah, and then it's like reading bedtime or watching some TV show or some like time for, for me in the end to relax. Mm -hmm. I've never heard that someone is drinking coffee during the night. Yeah, yeah they are drinking <laughs> coffee like, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. on weekends. It, sometimes it's like in three and the AM they sound like, are you up for a coffee? And I was like, yes. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so let's go to the next person. Um, Imran's schedule. Yeah, I think this is mine. So uh, this is best wow. right. You got a lot to explain, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so my body clock, I think, I think the right term, my, uh, what is it, chrono rhythm or chrono cycle? My my sleep cycle is mm -hmm. operates uh, differently than most people. So I just I go with the flow, and and uh, this is my mm -hmm. current situation where I'm uh, sleeping quite late. I'll go to bed at five or six in the morning, or or, and then I'll wake up in the middle of the uh, what what is the middle of the day for people that are chronotypes of 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 this this sort of time uh but yeah it's it's um i usually like like to clean up about around my house before i get to work so uh sort of the mm -hmm. tidying it's like the pre-procrastination procrastination and uh helps me get ready to get ready to do something so i've worked out that that's how i work so i've now decided to do productive procrastination which is cleaning and doing my dishes and making food and then yeah i'll have either have a class in the afternoon i'm quite lucky i can pick my classes now i've finished my basic course load and then i'm now picking afternoon classes for this reason which is wonderful and then mm -hmm. if i can i try and go sauna once a week it's not every day i dream of having my own sauna so i could go daily but i'm not mm -hmm. that lucky yet so i have to go when i can book one um and then yeah keep working and, and i actually spend quite a lot of time every day sort of reading new things or diving deep into a hobby or an area i'm really interested in and uh one of the other benefits of being up late is i can communicate with people in other time zones uh so i talk to my family in australia and malaysia which is i think plus five or plus seven hours ahead so uh, usually at 1 a.m they're waking up for the day and i think 4 a.m my dad wakes up for the day so it's it sort of syncs up really nicely yeah and that that's that's me okay interesting and uh michael please <laughs> yeah i think i at one point gave up uh to find a good day so uh, yeah i, I tried to, to think what i'm doing every day every day is kind of different and then i think i just closed um powerpoint but um like i try to wake up at about about nine that's actually quite right like i i'm not good at waking up early like usually the day is re reserved for for lectures and group meetings um lunch is mostly at campus i, I like to eat at wicked rabbit it's a really nice uh, vegan restaurant buffet style so you, if you're ever at alto you should check it out um yeah then at evening also once a week sauna i try to um swim once or twice a week like that's pretty important as well like for especially in winter to keep yourself somehow fit um yeah this th this october i'm trying to cycle for a thousand kilometers um for charity so i'm trying to do that every uh day somehow and squeeze it in and yeah and in the evening it's all about like coursework um and winding down to watching King of Queens right now. And then at some point going to sleep as well. I think like it's about like one when I go to sleep most of the time or two. Mm -hmm. So pretty late, yeah. Okay, thank you. So we're going to the next uh, chapter of our discussion. This is the campus. So our campus is really beautiful and it's uh, surrounded by nature and also by the sea. 
and only like 10 minutes away from the city center so it's really close like the Helsinki city center not as well <laughs> so okay I want you to share a bit about the campus um, what is it like and what do you like most of it so. well for me I like the most that there is a lot of people everywhere everywhere around every day and there is always something happening and it's really easy to make friends and meet people at the campus literally you can just approach someone and hey say hey what are you doing today do you want to hang out and they will be like yes <laughs> so the, apart from that my favorite part as an architecture student is that we are surrounded like the great architecture all around us you can see the Aldous work you can see some postmodernism uh, in architecture here and also some contemporary modern architects uh, they, they designed the metro station that is a, the, 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 the picture on, on the right. So for me, th th that is my favorite thing that I'm surrounded with great architecture. Mm -hmm. And I live in great architecture and I study great architecture. Okay, and yeah, please, uh, Michael or Imran, do we want to add something? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I can definitely add that uh... Your map reading and navigation skills will improve. Uh, the campus is can be quite a maze, especially the uh, the student center and and Dipoli. But D Dipoli is uh, the offices for the the leadership team and not and and sort of a space and there's a restaurant there, but not so many classes are there. But uh, the Candy uh, Kaskus the uh, uh, bachelor's the undergraduate center is is uh, it, it's it's a grid but you can forget which part of the grid you're on and and it's quite fun but it's really mm -hmm. nice that you know five minutes away you can actually walk towards the edge because Otanyemi is a peninsula so if you go to the north or to the the east you can actually find the water and there's a really lovely path so <clears throat> there's a really lovely path that if you have a bit of time during between classes and you just want to be in nature you don't have to go very far and you can have a bit of a nature break which is really really lovely especially when you have a lot of classes yes there is also a hiking trail around the campus as well so it's it's really nice to be surrounded by nature and animals that was really surprising for me as well because we are basically 10 minutes from the city center and we are surrounded with I don't know, deers rabbits birds, and everything <laughs> And fo <laughs> foxes, if you're lucky. Fo oh, no, I haven't yeah, seen a fox. Yeah. yeah, I've seen a fox. I've seen one chased by an e a seagull once. Okay. You know, that that's the other thing that surprised me in Finland is how large the seagulls are here. There's like <laughs> mega seagulls. They're like, as big as a dog. Yeah. Yeah. So. Rabbits as well. <laughs> yeah, you have the hares and the, the rabbits. So you've got the, the really large ones. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you live in a zoo on campus. And that's really something I also enjoy, like the nature, like it's really woody there, like a lot of trees and it's like a peninsula, so surrounded by waters, so it's great. Um, I think that's also a photo that I added. It's like one of my favorite piers on campus. Like it's, there's like a sauna right next to it and you can just walk out in the ocean and take a dive or, yeah, mm -hmm. cut through the ice in winter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's go on here we have like a housing and student benefits uh, yeah um as many of us know that students in finland are entitled to many benefits i'd like to you to tell a bit more about that uh, and well the first question is what kind of housing options are there for students like what kind of companies are there and etc so what's the start? <laughs> well, there are different options for students here, beginning with the studio apartments, dorms and share apartments. You can also always take a family apartment which, if you are coming here to live with a family. And um, for me personally, it was really easy to find apartment because I had a friend here so she sublease me her apartment until the December so basically I'm paying to her and she's paying to AYY and AYY is a student organization association who actually basically owns this building because of that the apartments are quite affordable here for 
students, important thing is to apply for this accommodation as soon as possible. I am still waiting in the queue for my new apartment and I applied in May. So that will be a good thing to keep in mind. And also I live in Alvarez Alto building. Uh, it's a dormitory with a shared kitchen. I actually share a kitchen with 10 people. So that's the reason I have so many friends with you drink coffee in the middle of the night. And I think it's a great um, type of the apartment for all newcomers because it will be really easy for you to find friends and socialize and not feel lonely here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what about others? And uh, as I know, there is the other housing accommodation company called Hoas. Uh, so if anyone is living in this yeah. kind of apartment, can share a bit about that too. I, I've been living in Hoas for maybe coming up to two years now in three different, I've moved, I've been in three different Hoas apartments. I'm hopefully in my final one until I graduate. Uh, but HOAS is uh, abbreviation, I think, Helsingin Seudun Opiskelia Asun To Satio, which is the yeah. foundation for student housing in the Helsinki region. And um, they have a much broader range of locations, but I would recommend applying to them as well. Uh, they can be uh, a little bit cheaper than uh, AYY, which is the Alto university student union or they can be more expensive it really depends um, but one tip i would say is accept the first offer you receive because if you don't accept that you will go back to the back of the line and you'll have to wait and you'll have to maybe do what melissa did and find a, a sublease until you can actually get a place and the beauty the beautiful thing about Finnish uh, rental law is if you have a contract that is 12 months or longer, but I think you should double check this, you can give one month of notice. Um, this is what I read maybe a few years ago, so it might have changed, but definitely look up on housing law here as well. Uh, rental law in Finland, but what that means is you can move into a place that might not be ideal, but it's cheap and it's for students and then you can reapply to another place either in AYY or in HOA so you have some flexibility but get that first house it's super important to get settled as soon as you arrive and not have to be dealing with moving house too, too many times or like staying in an Airbnb for a week and then shifting to another place so yeah but mm -hmm. um I'm living in Hoas. It's really great. I just moved into a new building. It's the tallest timber building in Finland. Uh, and it's pretty cool. I finally have a studio uh, three years later. And uh, so the dream does come true, everyone. You just have to be patient uh, and lucky and apply at the right time. But it's it's really nice. There's a Hoas has a sauna booking system and laundry booking system, which is okay. And you have five sauna turns every month and five five laundry turns every week. Mm -hmm. So if you if you if it, if you plan properly, you can have sauna every week. And also, there's always a lot of washing machines available. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go better because we don't have enough time. <laughs> uh, yeah. And if probably Michael would tell more about the uh, accessibility of our campus. Yeah, it's getting easier and easier to go there. Um, they're just right now, like, okay, first on the picture, you're seeing the metro system that is like really just um, terminate or like not terminating, but there's a stop right at campus um, at the uh, at Vere, which is like um, a big new school of uh, uh, arts architecture, I think, and um, school of business. And there's also a huge shopping center there. So it's really right in the center of campus. So this brings you there. Then they're also building uh, the Jokeri, I think. That's a, it's a new light rail line that is also going through um, campus. So um, buses as well. It's also pretty easy to reach by bike or by foot because um, Helsinki... Uh, it's not a big place. It's not a big place, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like on, and, um, yeah, yeah, it's quite flat too. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, campus is, is like um, Otaniemi is bigger than downtown Helsinki. So that's a very interesting uh, fact. And um, yeah, for example, I commute for like, um, I think it's like 20 minutes from my place to campus and it's okay to go there. Yeah, not that mm. hard. Okay, let's go further. Uh, and what kind of benefits do you have? For example, the 
yeah what we have here some pictures can someone yeah. explain yeah as a student union member you have access to frank which is the finnish student card it's it's a interesting situation because it's sort of a private company and uh and they negotiate discounts with other other businesses and you can get student discounts and things like that now uh, it's an app you can get a physical card and above the frank logo is the uh, helsinki transport hsl helsinki transport company google this one everyone but uh, that's the that's the main that's the main metro and bus provider in the Helsinki region or the capital region, which is Espo, Vanta, Helsinki. So you can get a card and you can get a season pass that is student fee. And there's, that system is changing next year, but you should be able to do it online now. And uh, there are some complexities with that. You need this strong identification, which is a Finnish ID card mm -hmm. you need to get. So. It's it's fun, but uh, otherwise you get discounted travel. Um, you can get discounts at uh, the school lunches. You can get discounts uh, at shops. Uh, uh, the VR, which is the train network across Finland, so you can travel up north to Lapland. And I think there's a 20 to 30% discount for students and bookshops. And you can use this as your student card. You just flash, flash it on the app and show the shop and ask hey do you have a student discount available and yeah it's quite good yeah coffee one for coffee are very cheap at the kiosk for 150 yeah and just a good exa example for like public tra like transport for example to all like which which is like all the way up in finland as a student you can find prices for like 12 17 euros to go all the way through finland so it's really cheap yeah, yeah. um just maybe one one thing when you already know that um, you might be accepted to Alto, try to get the residency permit or similar as soon as possible because um, or like when you're not even in Finland yet, because it's, it's quite a process and the authorities, it, it, they take their time. And um, as long as you don't have this residency permit and some other things, you might not be able to uh, get those um, HSL um, yeah, uh, tickets. Finish address registration too. Exactly, this as well. That's yeah. like yeah. the pain. Okay, let's go further. And I would, I would, I would quickly add, uh, okay. get onto the Finnish ID as soon as you get here. You might have to budget an extra seventy or eighty euros for that. So just be prepared. And because, for example, there was a case where someone couldn't buy their student lunch at one cafeteria because they didn't take cash and they're frank and they they didn't have a Finnish bank account and they didn't have strong identification to do this thing and so mm -hmm. get get um, on the get on the bureaucratic sheet as fast as you can yeah so the next topic we have is career opportunities yeah um, in our university you can explore different kinds of work opportunities already during the studies for example us we work as a uh, student ambassadors here in Alta University. Uh, yeah, and that's one of the <laughs> possible ways to be uh, somehow here. And yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I would say that definitely it is possible to find even part time job for one semester working for the Alta Squad as ambassadors. But also, in my experience, I am new here and I just got here, we also got like two emails from our professors inviting us to be their assistants or study assistants. So, so it, it could be possible like in the very beginning to find something one or two semesters long as a part-time job. And also we have to be careful, especially people who are not from the European Union as me, um, that our visa has a limitation of um, amount of hours. Yeah, we we can work uh, in a week. It's twenty. Yes. I think it's like twenty yeah. hours. Yeah. Yeah. Is the limit. Yes. Okay. And yeah, I would I would add that it's also uh, think about your study load before forty hours plus another twenty hours of work. And mm -hmm. look, if you're young enough and you have the ability to sustain the stress, I don't encourage you to do it but focus on your studies. But um, there are opportunities to work, but combining studies with work will be quite challenging. You have to consider if you're ready to do that and power to you if you can, but it's okay not to combine them if you can't. Yeah, and um, to, to if you don't wanna do that and 
um, still want to work, there's still the opportunity to do it in the summer months, which is like, because here in Finland, I don't know how it's in other countries, but you have like three months of summer break. So there's a lot of time for you to take a job, an internship, etc. Yeah. And also in, in the program itself, uh, for example, my program, we worked with companies and I did, I think, seven client projects. So, uh, and through two or three of them, there are work opportunities like summer cadetships or, or internships. Okay. Yeah. So the next topic is student life. Um, so what is the student life like? <laughs> Uh, I could probably start with this one. Uh, <laughs> yes, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's whatever you make of it, really. Um, there is a lot of uh, associations here. There's this thing called a, a special status association, and they have a special ad advocacy role, and they take care of new students that arrive to Alt University. So each school and each department may have a student student association or guild and you can join and they usually have a lot of events and they also come together and have big events across the whole university across all the schools and uh that's that's i would really encourage you to get involved there because you meet brand new people you look you know if you if it's also another way to get work experience because you are given responsibilities uh, you're given tasks to do, and it's a really, I would say, one of the safest places to fail at what you're doing, and that's the best way to learn. And it's better to fail at a small project than a multi-million-dollar project where there's a lot more liability. Uh, so, like, you can really test the waters, find out, discover what you're capable of, what you're comfortable doing, what you're interested in, and what you want to explore, and you get to make friends and. I think I said earlier, it's a really good way to network uh, and build your professional, if you want to stay in Finland, really build your professional network here. Mm, okay. Does anyone wants to add, want to add something here? Yeah, that's pretty, I mean, there are many different events, for example, parties, game nights, guild nights, sit sits, many association and everything. I mean, participation in these hobbies and associations is really affordable. For me, for example, I am taking these classes in Poland, and the uh, year membership is 30 euros, like for the whole year. And there are many volunteers, and I really like this culture of volunteering here. It was also something kind of new for me. So yeah, mm -hmm. just, just join everything you're yeah. interested in, and don't be shy because everyone are really welcoming and supportive of you trying new things. Even if you feel they're like, you're doing a great job, just keep trying. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. So as I understood, you're doing a pole dance during your free time, right? Yeah, the, the, that's basically yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. what I do during my free time. Mm -hmm. And I take like these slight hikes around the, the campus. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I went to a city of Helsinki a few times, mm -hmm. like for a sightseeing, but not that often anymore since the studies mm -hmm. started. So that's my main activity apart from the university right now because they also have stretching classes handstand classes like many many different things in this like association mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what about others what do you do on your free time um everything between hiking and biking so uh yeah either i'm around with my gravel bike some some bike packing longer trips shorter trips or i'm out in some national park um yeah and uh, or you will you will find me on the ultra test side, which is also something I can maybe advocate a bit. Uh, that's like a kind of student driven community there where we have like, you know, urban gardening, permaculture stuff. We're building sheds, we're um, to building pizza ovens and it's like all student projects that you can come up with and even like get it like uh, get credits for it if you want to. And uh, it's really fun to hang out there as well. Yeah, I, I can, I've only really started going into Finnish nature this year and I'm a bit sad I didn't do it earlier because it's really kind of profound, you know, it's uh, so close, but it's, it, it's, it's a whole little world. And I just discovered this concept of forest bathing, 
from Japan, which which is quite good if you stay in the forest for a few hours, you get a lot of physiological benefits as well as as the the sort of the peace and the ease of being in nature. Um, but yeah, I've actually just been since the pandemic, I've fired up a few of my hobbies when I was a, a teenager and. I'm actually into these remote control cars. And uh, as people say, Finland is the promised land for associations. And I've joined this remote control car association and they have a racetrack in Vanta and you can take your car there and race indoors. Uh, and then also I've been listening to a lot of music. I, I bought a turntable and some nice speakers and I just sort of lie on the floor and listen to music for a few hours every now and then. So yeah, I'm doing a lot of relaxing. To balance out all the the work I'm doing at at uni. Yeah. Okay. So the next topic is the Alta community. Yeah, this is a home to a diverse and multidisciplinary community of students, staff, and faculty. And I want you to answer to uh, the question: How were you welcomed here? Um, Oh, maybe I should start as a proxy, mm -hmm. as a freshman. Mm -hmm. We were actually assigned with the uh, tutor, student tutor here. And I think that I got the most perfect tutor that can be found here on Alto. She is great. She explained us everything we needed to know and led, uh, and led us to our orientation week. You can see these little books. Uh, you can like collect stamps during the, the first semester and then you can get your Tekari cap in the end, when you collect enough number of points. She also explained us how CCIT works. They are like really important part of this community, student community here. She organizes a trip to a cabin of architecture. She made sure that we make friends with the people from our program and people from like all the year and other bachelor students. So I felt really, really welcome here. And I hope that everyone will have my experience because she was perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Michael, yeah. do you want to share or Imran? Michael, go for it, man, if you have yeah. anything. No, maybe like uh, not that much, just that it just a bit uh, depends on the um, study program that you have as well, because uh, some programs are like, you know, they give the perfect welcoming week while other smaller programs mm -hmm. just don't have that much planned. That's maybe something I wanted to add. No. Uh, uh. Yeah, I can try and add quickly. I'm watching mm -hmm. that clock. Um, uh, within within my bubble of studies and, and student association, it was quite welcoming. But outside of that bubble, you kind of need like another tutor to bring you into those communities because a lot of the time language is a big barrier here and not everybody's comfortable speaking English, Finnish mm -hmm. students. So uh, you, 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 can, you can struggle to uh, move from one bubble to another bubble. So definitely though, within the international community, everybody's quite welcoming. And uh, it's not that people aren't welcoming, it's just you need to be, what's the right word here? You need to be sort of vetted or uh, uh, somebody has to sort of say, okay, this person's all right. And then they'll be okay with you, which is, uh, it's just the way things have been here from what I understand. Yeah, okay. Uh yeah, I think you have uh, have already covered this question pretty much. <laughs> if someone wants to add more. Yeah, I, I'll add this is actually my photo of this. So we in my program, we had international dinner nights where we would cook each other. Uh, oh. We would cook food from each other's cultures and, and countries and backgrounds. And we would share food. We would come and meet. And this was this was this was in 2018 and 19. <laughs> so this was before the pandemic. and. Yeah, but you can come together and cook and we, we, we spend a lot of time with each other and uh, we, we try and understand each other and it's really lovely. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. Um, yeah, and the next question um, is also already like covered before, but mm -hmm. if someone wants to add more? Um, yeah, I mean, in the... I, th I saw like the the question I'm otherwise formulated in the in the sheet. It was like, is it difficult if you don't speak the Finnish language? Mm -hmm. And I would say it's it's not more difficult than if you speak the Finnish language. 
Um, so it's um, it's definitely possible to to get around. Um, but as Imran already said, like Finns might be like a bit reserved in English and feel more comfortable speaking uh, Finnish, of course. Yeah. And maybe in the job market as well, like when you want to get a high paid job, that would be the place where the Finns actually want you to have like, um, yeah, good knowledge proficiency in Finnish, sadly. Yeah. That changes soon. Yeah. It is. It, you Look, on a basic level, yes, you can survive without knowing Finnish. Everything operates and Google Translate is getting better. So you just have to understand keywords and work out what you're picking from the shelf in the supermarket. Yeah. And uh, otherwise, like Michael said, employment wise, if you are really thinking about staying here, I would highly encourage to get involved with Finnish language as soon as you arrive and reach out and try and make friends with as many Finns as you can, because context and culture really help you learn language too. Yeah. Okay. Um, now we are going to go through the questions you sent here in the chat so i'm going to be uh, telling you those questions and um, some questions are person oriented like a program oriented so i would also uh, tell that too yeah, if needed so um, the first question is how should i prepare myself for the application process and creating my portfolio and do you have any tips about creating a portfolio? So it's, yeah, uh, anyone can answer? Uh, yeah, just uh, if you do group projects, a great tip is to be very clear about what your role is and what other people's roles were and be very articulate about that. That's actually some feedback I got from, uh, from a company. So uh, if that helps guide the portfolio and a uh, personal tip would be really think about how that uh, expresses your capabilities and remember you are very capable and you have good capabilities that was a question i struggled with so yeah okay yeah, my advice might be to try to pick up a few of your best works and use them like every 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 project use it to to show the skill you have it doesn't have to be like if you are putting something from interior design there is opportunity for you to explain how good are you at rendering if you're putting something from the architectural design that's the opportunity to show like your technical skills and your concept thinking uh, skills and try to keep it as clean as possible we are not graphic designers we are architects and i noticed that many of my colleagues really confuse these two things and be original, do not search like the Pinterest or something because we are really individual individuals here and you will work on everything individual and you really need to express yourself and be honest with your portfolio, at least that was in my case and that work out. And it's not like the recipe, there is no recipe for the portfolio, but this is these are like some general and yes, be really really clear with what are individual and which ones are group projects you can see that i think even on um Alt university site that they are really specific with the, this mm. okay I, I might add quickly as well mm -hmm. um uh well i'm going back to 2018 but read the criteria or the description of the program that you're applying to and they'll have questions there and it's really good to try and understand them and try and articulate those in your portfolio as well as best you can so just yeah do what you can but remember it's a showcase of what you can do and what you bring okay so um imran this is uh this is the question that is going to be answered by you okay particularly. i'll try, I'll try um, my best <laughs> So was it, uh, what is different from what you expected? And what is this, uh, what is the same from what you expected? Okay, um, that's a very deep, profound question. Uh, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of like a Zen question. Uh, uh, look, I, I came in with, um, I actually come into most situations with no, no expectations. 
and I try and understand and see things for what they are and what's happening in front of me. So uh, I, I mean, uh, I wasn't sure what to expect. And I'd come from, I did my bachelor in Melbourne at RMIT University, industrial design. So I had that reference to go from. Uh, and I was, I was, once I started comparing with that experience, um, mm. but it, it was, it is a different pedagogical approach here. Uh, the pressure is different. There is not as much pressure to perform. Um, academic penalty for failing doesn't exist. Whereas in Australia, if I failed the subject, it would be marked on my transcript permanently. And that changes the pressure. So you're actually quite free to uh, explore. And that's really lovely because sometimes life gets difficult and you can't perform the best that you'd like. And it's okay to stop and it's okay to maybe do less than what you expect you want to do so uh, and then as for myself uh, I don't know if I I try not to expect too much from myself in these classes I, I actually my motto is you only need to pass uh, and then I seem to do okay when I when I have that approach so I, I really came in with uh, uh, almost no expectations because I, I tried to take things as they come so I recommend that approach if you can handle it if not just do what you can, take your time, lay everything out to try and understand it. Mm. Okay, thank you. Um, and now the question is for Michael. Um, um, if I wish to apply for creative sustainability, how many projects should we keep in the portfolio? Uh, and which kind of projects will leave a better impact? <laughs> Yeah, um, the amount is not that important. I think just maybe try to focus on the on the good ones, like quality over quantity for sure. Um, the like, in, in, it's, it's hard to explain on what they're searching for. They don't specify really, but um, that good. But I think it's um, also concept over aesthetics. So. Um, I'm not sure if you can just like um, write down a concept paper and put it in your portfolio, but at least you should like have like that's like it's more about the thinking for the creative sustainability and they kind of see like your design capabilities as something that you can develop also in the studies. So yeah, maybe try to search for projects that are more like, um, you know, have a good thinking behind it and, uh, and are, you know, going deep into like you know what they want to change yeah i don't know if that answers your question <laughs> hopefully um okay so move on to the next question uh did any of you receive scholarships and in your way what increased your chances of receiving these scholarships i actually got the full scholarship from the alto university for tuition fees Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how they are graded at this site. It is explained that they're graded along with others, uh, with, with your application. So there is no separate, separate application. You just check a checkbox. So I'm not sure what the criteria is because I haven't seen any like uh, list of students or, or points we received or anything. So I'm not sure maybe someone is more informed about this. Uh, I I have a ha I received half scholarship for two years and I've actually gone beyond my two years so I'm actually paying full fee for this this final year but I've actually received two types of scholarships the first one was the uh, like Melissa with the when I applied I ticked the box I'm applying mm -hmm. for a scholarship I I was given half what I understand about scholarships here is that it's given on academic merit so you're basically lined up with your peer group. And I think the best performers uh, are given the full and then uh, other people got half. But also, it, it's I think it's entirely up to the department yes. and the school. Because, for example, in my program or in, in my department, many people had half, but very few had full. So I think the idea was to spread the scholarship to as many people as possible. possible yes. so, so it really is up to the school and how they determine it. But I uh, think... Yeah. 
that I read before that you can actually apply again. And then if your academic performance is good, they might give you a scholarship for the next year, but I'm not sure. No, that, that I, these are only one. these are some yeah, these are some yeah. like information from the side because I was considering what I'm going to do if I don't get like full full scholarship. But I don't think that I have it, it enough doesn't work. knowledge. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, work. From what I understand, it's uh you get one shot at a scholarship, uh, and that's at the beginning, and it's not there. And there's some other situations if you apply to multiple courses, but I think there's actually if you look up scholarships on the alto.fi website there's a page with all this information mm -hmm. yeah it, it's yeah. best to check there maybe yeah. some things have changed since we were applying so yeah but definitely yes. you get that once the other type of scholarship is for significant haloped contribution and haloped is a student uh advocate position that you can have and uh, i actually received one i was on the board of the student union in 2020 and um uh, because that took up so much time. That's why I'm a fourth year student, because I spent uh, part of my second and half of my third year uh, on the board, and they gave me a full scholarship to, to be able to participate at that level of student advocacy. So, but that means you won't be studying, but you'll be doing work to support the community. And that's also a very valuable experience if you want work experience. Um, yeah. Okay, wow. It's definitely um, possible to get the scholarship, but we are not sure <laughs> about how. Yeah, but it's, yes. a, it's, it's the, when you apply, that's when you get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so the next question is, how did COVID-19 change the education? And do you still have online classes? Yeah, definitely have. <laughs> yeah, so uh, anyone please answer? Uh, in a nutshell, it you lost the face-to-face -face and casual interaction uh, and the informal side of education, which is the discussions, because as soon as you finish class, you switch off. And that's a bit sad, but I think we're, I don't know what the official status is. I haven't read the email yet, uh, but uh, we have had online and I think we will be shifting to in-person soon because what I read, we can utilize the campus facilities to its, fullest now is that correct yeah yeah it's, yeah, right. it's yeah. fully available right now well for me i kind of used to this like online teaching and the projects here are individual so it is much easier for architecture students to handle their projects because you're dependent on yourself and also we have one great teacher who actually assigned us uh, study buddies so you can always meet with the people and and study together or work together or discuss about your projects even though you don't work together so for me it's maybe kind of easier than going especially because this is my first year like studying in english and it's much easier for me personally to follow everything from home and type my notes and mm -hmm. yeah but i'm looking forward to going like fully in person <laughs> hopefully really soon yeah yeah still uh, at least as a design student and when you're like you know you you, you kind of rely on the campus infrastructure and you, you want to know everything so that you can fully develop your project, for example. Like you want to know where the printers are, you want to know where the workshops are. And when you come new to Alto and everything is virtual, um, you just lose that part. And it's so hard to, to figure out stuff. So your design projects, at least in my case, they, they kind of sacrifice the part. Um, yeah, but as the other two already pointed out, like you will maybe not be affected and you may, may have luck. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you have group work, that adds a bit of difficulty because again, in a group work setting, the flow is a lot more natural. But when you're doing it on Zoom, it's one at a time and, you know, two people can't go off and talk about something at the same time. So it, it, it can be a bit challenging. Okay. Uh, so the next question is, if I study at Alto, would I have the time to have a part-time job? I think we we kind of covered this yes. earlier. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you, yeah. you, you, you can, you, you could, but it also depends on what you can handle. So yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. Uh, I, I think the best advice I heard was uh, don't expect the part-time job to, uh, sustain you too much mm -hmm. like you should be you should do your best to come here with as much resource as you can 
so you don't have to work but if you need to it is possible it'll just be a bit challenging Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question is, um, is there anything that you don't like about the campus? <laughs> so far, no. <laughs> maybe, maybe something, for example, I live at the party building, so maybe some people are bothered by the noise and the parties, but for the first two weeks there were parties like every night here in front of my window so that might be something that maybe bothers some people but not me i mean if i'm tired i just sleep so maybe something like that but everything else is really just great <laughs> yeah okay so what about others <laughs> not, yeah not much uh, maybe a bit that there's so much construct uh, construction going on that would be yeah. maybe one thing um, and also, I mean, that's like from my perspective as like looking into the sustainable side, but, you know, they, they're trying to um, get a lot more student housing and stuff on campus, a lot more people working there. So I kind of don't like that they sacrifice a lot of nature for that. Uh, but yeah, that's maybe something that just a couple of people will actually interest, be interested in. Um, yeah, I, I would add that uh, the building I, I was in, Vare, uh, and also I think Michael is in there as well uh that was that had some teething issues because when i arrived in 2018 it was a brand new building and uh, it's meant to be a sort of a building for art students but it's very sterile and it was very challenging to find spaces to work as a group but uh what's great is the, the school of arts and the university acre which is the alto campus uh department i guess i don't know what the proper name is but they were listening to feedback and over the last couple of years they've been developing the space to make it more accommodating and functional for for the students that are there so if there's something you don't like about the campus speak up mm -hmm. okay um, yeah the next question is for melissa too okay um which types of courses can you take in architecture studies? Okay, uh, every semester you have only one design studio course, and that is the only one course that you are actually designing some, something. As far as I know right now, that's my situation at the moment. The rest of the, the courses are lecture base it's not like in my university home we had like lectures and exercise it separately uh in the rest of the courses which are like three or six credits for me it, it's kind of mixed so for example i am taking inter interplay of culture studio we have a lot of readings like two articles per week and then we have like four hours long discussion at the discussion table and we write a diary and then I have the regular design course where I like develop concept and draw. And in the end, I have to, I need to have the building to, to, to show. And I also taking like the wood class. It is basically a two hours long lecture. And then we have free assignments to make posters on some topic of our research. So it really varies. It depends on you, which, which courses you will take. But for this semester, for me, it's like this, this kind of mixed, approach like I have discussions I have essays I have different assignments I have research so it differs at least from my bachelor studies when I had a lot of design projects like three or four or even five per semester mm -hmm. okay um yeah the next question is um are there a lot of biking paths in Helsinki or Otani I mean so, maybe that's something to answer yeah. for me uh, yeah they are um i mean there's cities that do it even better but um uh, there's a couple of bike highways especially in helsinki um that's like really going throughout helsinki as well. and then there's like a lot of opportunity like they just really make sure that there's always place for bikes like the those are the pedestrian sidewalks are very wide and sometimes they have like split for bikes and and pedestrians um yeah but maybe make sure that your bike is like suitable for like a lot of you know rocks and stones as well because some like it's not all paved yeah but it's good to get around okay um 
uh, as you're talking, I'm going to be asking one more question <laughs> to you. Uh, I would really like to know more about uh, CS program from personal perspective and how multidisciplinary approach applies in the class learning settings. So, um, yeah, from yeah, I mean, when you want to when you want to know about the CS uh, program, there's a great summary on the website. I will not do that here right now. Um, but how we try to solve it is to you know, there's um, all the different uh, disciplines have kind of their own terminologies and you know ways of thinking and ways of saying things. A method, for example, like for example, a method and design is not the same. Or like in humanities is not the same as a method used, for example, in engineering or the hard sciences. So there's like, you know, there's a lot of work to do to kind of bring everything on the same level regarding like the terminology and the way of thinking. And then when this happened, um, you get to know about a lot about like, um, yeah, also methodologies about like how to solve, for example, um, like, for example, about, about systems thinking, how to how to um connect different points in the system and see how they're connected in in that and try to conclude what is the best way to to act in that system and to, to get like the biggest leverage you know that's like all stuff you learn together and often um in hands-on projects for example there's a course on, that's called design for government where you actually work um together with, for example, the city of Helsinki or the um, Helmet, which is like the library um, organization here, I don't know. So they give you really good real life problems to solve or projects and you are able to kind of um, solve on a very secure basis without like being able to fail much and yeah get a lot of great feedback so that's how you how you learn your approaches and how you how you're supposed to do it mm. yeah. okay thank you uh there is like one question that uh i'm not sure if someone can answer but still uh while studying is it possible to work for a company from a foreign country remotely uh, for example, working for a U.S. company remotely and keeping the 20 hours limit. So that's I mean, on a practical level, yeah, you could do that. But uh, legally, I think we're not in the right position to give you advice. It would depend where you pay tax, uh, how taxation works. So you need to look into that if you are paid in the U.S. and you're taxed in the U.S. Uh, yeah so but if you're if you're paid to a finnish bank account and you pay tax here then it would probably impact so i would check tax law i would check the immigration restrictions but we i don't think we can formally give you any advice on that yeah. sorry <laughs> okay uh next question is how tough is to learn the language so the finnish language <laughs> Uh, challenge <laughs> my, my my finnish teacher disagrees with it being challenging my finnish teacher thinks it's actually quite easy uh once you understand the logic yeah you should pay but michael's attention. taking michael's taking finnish i'm taking finnish uh plan plan a lot plan in a lot of time like i don't have time and i struggle um but yeah, like it's it's not like every other language. Like, for example, you know, I'm German and it's very easy for me to learn other European languages in general, like some like because of like the Latin heritage or the Greek or, you know, so for example, Swedish is also very similar, but Finnish is like totally different. Um, so that you may have to keep in mind. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's a phonetic language. So you I think that's the right way of putting it. So what the letters the, no, sorry. Is it a phonetic? The alphabet is phonetic. So you, as you, as they're written, there's one sound per letter. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe there's one instance where one letter is different, but otherwise, every letter has one sound, and there is not many exceptions to that. So it's very easy. Once you understand the sounds, it's very easy to read and pronounce the words. And then once you understand the word structure and then how the words are modified, so it, it's doable. Uh, I would suggest. 
looking up this thing called comprehensible input or like I think the natural way of learning uh, language and you know what start start watching Peppa Pig in Finnish <laughs> like just just get it running in your ear and watch there is there's some there's some YouTubers who are one guy he just describes what he's doing in Finnish and that's a really good way because context and language go hand in hand so try and approach Finnish like you're a baby and you're learning language for the first time yeah. yes you can also at least i did that uh you can also access the alto open school i think on my courses and they are like finnish survival courses i was interested in like learning finnish a bit before i came here so maybe you can try to check when the courses are start and then you just need to fill your name and your personal email and then you get access to my courses page for the salt uh, alto finnish survival course if you're really like worried and interested you can try and you can drop it anytime there is no yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. so yeah. there's uh, another question um how many times did you apply before you were accepted and any tips for the interview so anyone please <laughs> uh, i i applied first time and i got in uh which i'm very grateful and lucky um tips for the interview well uh, this sounds a bit strange, but I think my interview was just verifying my identity. So they were just making sure I was the one that applied. But uh, the best tip I have is be yourself. Uh, you, if you're getting an interview, you know you have a capacity and a capability. So remember that you have that, and remember what you wrote in your application because it is relevant. And that sort of your answers to that will still come through. So yeah, and relax. It'll be fine. Okay. Um, and the last question probably for today is if each of you were to be completely honest, what is your least favorite part of Alto University as an institution? Nothing so far. Maybe this mess that happened with the Franca because transition from the old informational system to CISU and it wasn't work for like a few days but that is just for this year because they had like this big transition in, in the studying platforms but nothing really everyone like really high kind and helpful and at least in my experience like perfect perfect people here <laughs> yeah okay yeah, I think no one has any no. complaints. No, maybe, uh, maybe that's one thing, <laughs> but it won't happen again, I believe. Uh, I, I might have a few, but Michael, do you have any before I get started? <laughs> I don't want to scare people off, but um, no, maybe just, you know, like my, my, my bachelor's was a bit like in a small faculty um, and we were like the courses were a bit smaller and we were really close to the teaching personnel there as well. So um, this was a bit of a shift to be a bit more anonymous let's say really yeah like for the, the, me it's opposite completely great yeah. <laughs> i'm surprised yeah but um yeah it was a really small faculty so um it was just nice to be around there and all like you know everybody and hey 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 hey. but it's also nice to have some sense of anonymity maybe but yeah Imran, maybe you have more well uh my my feedback is based on my advocacy work so uh, I'll limit it to my student perspective. So as a student, it's it's uh, there are some issues with the way things have been done, limitations, the scholarship situation, um, how difficult, how non-transparent that is. Uh, and then also like maybe on a cultural level, it's been quite difficult uh, amongst the student community at times to really uh, to really integrate um so that's a bit of a challenge as well so but all of these things can be solved with a bit of work and uh you know you can speak up and there's some more structural things that are sort of outside of alta but are part of being in finland that affect you as a student for example this need to get this strong identification in order to access anything online like the health service and then there are situations where like you're using the health service and not everyone has a great command of English. And that's not, that's, un, you know, that's to be expected because Finnish is the Finnish and Swedish are the main language here. So 
Uh, mm -hmm. There are a few sort of bumps in the road, but if you're patient um, and you give feedback, things will start changing. Uh, and even you can give feedback to the ministry itself. So okay. that's an option. Yay, thank you for your answer. Um, so what's next? Um, here, I'd like you to be in contact with us and remember to apply to Alta University. Uh, I think our uh, discussion is coming to an end. Um, thank you everyone who were participating and if you have still any questions, uh, please uh, join uh, the Friday's webinar. Uh, it is like a particular uh, webinar connected to admissions and if you still have really like uh, big questions uh, that are not explained during those dates, uh, please feel free to write to admissions at AltoFI. And um, if you still have questions about studying at Alto, uh, you can chat with our squad members on Unibody. Uh, probably all of us are there. Uh, also, uh, uh, sometime in the future, we'll have the squad uh, for a Friday coffee session. Uh, so feel free to come there too. Uh, and last but not least, uh, don't forget to check the latest news, uh, upcoming events and useful links on Alto website. Yeah, thank you very much and hope to see you uh, next fall uh, on campus. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Bye bye. Bye.